watch what happens when I start taking this hue slider and I start adjusting it. If you look at this, this, um, you know, this one here, this big color swatch, the current color, as I start to twist the hue slider over, look how the color gets brighter, and then it gets kind of dimmer, and then it kind of gets darker, and it gets brighter, right? So we got a little bit of a problem here. We can't really apply a, a hue shift without things perceptually increasing their, their brightness and their darkness. Um, you know, things will, will get brighter and they'll get darker, and we can't really trust this thing to, to allow us to just perform a hue slide without, you know, the, the, without, use, without letting, you know, the value, the, the perceived value go to hell. Um, you know, even though uh, numerically the luminance value is still locked at 128. So that's a bit of a problem. So I've gone and I've written um, a color palette, my own color palette tool, and this color palette tool, if you look here, you know, if, if you look at this, this color wheel here, you'll notice how, if you look at the color, the color um, spectrum here, look how bright that green is in comparison to, you know, maybe this, this blue. See how bright the difference is between these, these two values? There's, when you look at mine, look how different this blue is from that cyan. It takes the cyan and it dims it right down. It dims it right down, so as you go around the circle, Everything is ideally the same, the same value, the same perceived value. Things don't get brighter and don't get darker. The way you know that's that's the way things should work. Um, and actually, if I if I turn it off here, if I, if I turn that off altogether, um, then you'll see, see like there. If I if I turn off the compensation, that's that's the value compensation. You can see how things get brighter and darker, just like on regu any regular palette. But uh, I've got a, a value compensator built into this thing, and it does it by changing the um, the, the color space into a color space called LAB, and that's a that's a CIE standard um, for dealing with this whole perceived color th business. Now the only problem is um, because our color has a limited gamut of, of uh, intensities, you'll find that when you work, you know, in, in this this color picker over here, you'll find that, you know, blue is only capable of going up to 255. It can't go any brighter than that. And so as a result, I can't take, you know, I can't do a, a hue shift. Like, even this palette cannot do a hue shift that can bring this blue up to the brightness of this yellow or this red. So because of that limit, because of the, the channel limit, you know, limiting going up to 255, my color palette has these little dots, these little dotted sections. These little dotted sections are going to tell you, if I crank it and I, and I hit the top of this section, it's going to tell you when one of these channels has roofed to 255. You can just look at these sliders as I go up or down. When I, when I hit the bottom, of this this dotted region, see on this channel, this channel has now bottomed out to zero. So what these these dotted lines are are doing is they're showing you where the top and bottom of your gamut are. So if I do a hue shift, I'm going to do a hue shift. You see how these how these dots are changing? The dotted sections they move. See how they slide around like that? That's basically telling you that as long as you're within as long as you're within those dotted regions, that you can perform a hue shift and be relatively ensured that the luminance is the perceived luminance is going to be untouched. But once you go into a region like up here and you suddenly find your little selected color sitting outside of these, you know, sitting in the danger zone, then it's basically telling you that, you know, now you're in, in an area where we can't ensure that you're getting a color that's gonna, you know, stick in its proper hue. But that's that's what this palette does. Is at least at least this palette tells you when you're going to roof a channel. And when you roof the channel, then it means you're that that you're dealing with this this entire little section up here, this little top section here. This is the color of over. This is where you're going to wind up venturing when colors wind up being overexposed. You know, we've got a partial overexposure because we've partially roofed one of the channels. And as we go further and further up, there now I've. I've roofed the other two channels, green and blue, and so I wind it with white. And over here, this whole section here, see that? You've got the blue, is, is this is where the blue is bottoming up to zero. And this area is telling you where the, the region of underexposure is occurring. So that's how this palette works. Um, you know, you've got the saturation going left to right, you've got the value going up and down. Um, <coughs> but this palette attempts to, you know, help you make a better choice of color. You know, or, or rather, a color that that has a better luminance value. So that's why I've made this palette, and that's that's generally just what it does. Now, it's got a bunch of other stuff. Um, ooh, shoot! I don't think I should have. 
I shouldn't have killed my magnifier like that. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so... Okay, good. I need that magnifier to come back every now and then. Um, so when, when if I'm going to go and I'm going to deal with, let's say, let's deal with a sphere. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just take a, a mid-tone value somewhere in here. I'm going to illuminate this sphere. One of the things I did was, um, you know, Photoshop and most conventional color pickers will have what they call the eyedropper tool or, you know, a color sampler. And this one is no different. It's got an eyedropper tool and whenever you click a color, um, let me put some other colors up there. I'll just blue, 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 let's get a blue. Okay, so whenever you pick a color, it just grabs, uh, it just grabs whatever, you know, whatever color um, you have. Whatever color that you click on suddenly becomes the current color. If I click on white, it picks white. And that's A-OK. -okay. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's fine. But the only thing that really bothers me is that whenever I start picking colors, my eyeballs have to stare up here to see what my current color is. My eyeballs should be here on the painting, shouldn't they? You know, they shouldn't be up here on the corner where the color picker is residing. You know, they need to be, I need to keep my eyes on, on, my eyes on the painting because, you know, that's, that's where everything's going down. That's what's important. So what I've done is my color picker, um, you click that, there. It's got a color picker that follows your cursor around. And it, it, it shows you what your, the, the outer ring is telling you what your current color is. The inner ring is telling you what your, what your cursor is sitting on top of. This is the color you're going to pick. And the other thing you can do is that it's pressure sensitive so that instead of just clicking and just bang, it chooses the color. The harder you push on the stylus, you know, the faster it picks up the color. If, you, if you're very gradual, it'll do a very, very soft blending. But if you want it to pick up color instantly, just push very hard and it will pick up the color instantaneously. So this thing kind of helps with a bit of color blending. And the other color picker I created, um, since I don't use this thing so much anymore, is um, this, something you've, you've probably seen in some of my previous um, episodes, that this thing pops up now and then. This is another kind of color picker that I made. And what this color picker does is it's very much like the saturation value square. You see this saturation value square, how it changes whenever you pick up a color? It's the same thing. It simply shows you a sat val square, you know, centered around whatever color you've just picked, whatever hue you've just picked. So if I want to take this this um, object here, this, this, you know, this brown sphere, and I want to lighten it up, um, I can just eyeball the color, you know, in the center it's showing what the current color is. And I can look and see, well, what should the lighter color be? And um, general rule of thumb, now remember, uh, th rules of thumbs and, uh, and, and rules themselves are, thumbs and rules are kind of like the same thing, you know, when it comes to rules of, uh, of thumb, you know, rules can be broken, so can thumbs. So um, this particular rule of thumb is whenever something gets brighter, whenever you shine light on something, um, the saturation is going to increase. So on the left side of this, this, um, this little sat val circle, are colors that are less saturated than the current color you've just put your stylus on top of. If I'm on white, now white has is a color with no saturation at all. There's no color disproportion, so all of the left side is just filled with grays, and the right side are filled with saturations that go up. So the right is showing you colors that are more saturated than your current color. So if I want to illuminate something, I can just choose any color that's on the right side. Now, again, I've got the dotted re regions that are showing me where the, the channels are bottoming out or they're roofing. So if I want to say, well, I want a color that is just on the fringe of overexposure, I'm going to choose, I'm going to eyeball it. That looks about right. And I can, there, I can just illuminate. There, I've got the lit region right there. And, you know, I want to, if I, I can say I'm done here. But if I want even more light to shine on this region, then I can go and I can choose something that's, you know, even further along. Now we're in getting in the range of overexposure. So now I've I've partially overexposed, you know, this 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 sphere. And if I want even more exposure, you see how the colors are starting to roof out and they're starting to shift to become yellow. That's because our red and that's because the red and green channels are starting to top out. They they've they've roofed. And so it's incapable of showing anything but a yellow. And now our colors are shifting from a, from a red because the, the green's starting to catch up. The red can't go any higher. The red is, is roofed at 255. And so you're going to get yellow. And finally, if I want to completely overexpose that region, like in the case of um, a special